Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, welcome to the Funk Chronicles. I'm your host, Dr. Turk Logan from Logan Communication and the Funk Museum Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. And I am just so, so excited to talk to a dear, dear friend of mine. I haven't seen him in years, but I think about him all the time. His brother and I were very, very, very close for many years, and he is Mr. Keith Wilder from the legendary Heat wave. Keith, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How you doing today? I'm doing well. Doing well. Thank you for, for taking time out to talk to us. Um, you and I talked offline, and, and I know you still go out with the group after, what, 40 years now. Talk a little bit about your involvement with Heat Wave, especially when Heat Wave's on the road in America. Well, the involvement is... Uh one of the lead singers, and uh, I guess I've been doing this since Heat Wave actually began, and uh, just, you know, going back over all the hits and songs we've done, and a lot of the tours that we have done when you speak and do interviews, you go over that and rehash the past, and uh, it's been pretty good. Well, you know, we were together you, myself, your wife, your brother, um, Johnny Wilder, and his wife, Rosalind. Your wife, Linda, is from, from England. And we, I have a picture of us standing in, you and I, we were a whole lot slimmer then. And we both, I mean, you still have hair. I had a full head of hair with a big afro. And <laughs> so that, that's gone. But we were standing in front of the London Hilton together. I also have a picture of us at the CBS Record Convention sitting at the table, me, you, uh, and uh, Jack the Rapper. Another picture of us at that CBS Record Convention, you on the phone in my uh, hotel room making some plans to show us the city. You guys were such great, gracious hosts. And the picture when you guys came back to America and received your uh, one of your platinum selling songs that was on the um, the album. I also have, and I know you can't see it, but we'll talk a little bit about it, the Too Hot to Handle, I'll show it to the audience, the Too Hot to Handle album. This is the original Heat Wave Too Hot to Handle album with uh, all the members of the groups on the back. Uh, there's Rod Temperton, there's Keith Wilder, there's Johnny Wilder, and other members uh, of the group. Talk a little bit about that album and some of the big hits that came off of that album, Too Hot to Handle, Keith. Well, being the first album, it was a joy just because, uh, you know, that was almost the beginning chronicles of what Heat Wave was about and our style of music. But uh, being our first album and being a successful album, it was a great joy just because there were there was some strong, great hits on that album and great tunes on that album that really opened the door for us to pave the way for our career to get started. And I think it was just ooh, it was just an open invitation to what we were about and where we were going. Well, you know, I don't know if you know the history. I'm sure your brother may have told you, but in 1976, I was at a dance here in Dayton, Ohio, and your brother came to the dance and handed me this particular album, the Too Hot to Handle album. He said, he was very gracious, very humble. He said, when you have an opportunity, go home and listen to it and let me know what you think. He didn't ask me to play it on the radio. He just asked me to listen to it. And I took it home and I heard the Too Hot to Handle and Boogie Nights and Ain't No Half Steppin' and Super Soul Sister and one of the biggest hits that is in the country and being played today always and forever and just fell in love with this particular album. Yeah, it was a good one now. You can't knock that. <laughs> it, it was. And then the, the unique thing about that, Keith, 
I was invited to London, England, where the group resided in July of 1977, a year later, and CBS had repackaged the album once they signed you guys and sent it to me, repackaged, a year later, and after it was repackaged, they didn't know I had been playing it, this particular album for a year <laughs> and still have it intact today. And it has so many great memories. How many copies? Was, does this record go platinum? Or how did, how did, how did that a, work? It was a double platinum album. It mm -hmm. was one of the bigger selling albums that we had made. But uh, yeah, it went double platinum uh, in America. Platinum. Okay, so it went double platinum. In England. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that right. was that was what was so unique about Heatwave because you guys came from, even though some of you, you and your brother Johnny, uh, and maybe some of the other members from the group were from Dayton, Ohio, but you resided in Europe for many, many years. I believe the group was formed in, in London, England, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Johnny and I were the only two from from Dayton. Okay. The rest of uh, the rest of the, the rest of the group were uh, actually all born in Europe and uh, and and um, and yeah, Europe and like and in England. Like Bilbo was from Czechoslovakia. Mario was from Spain. And uh, um, oh, I'm trying to think. Bilbo, like I said. Rod Temperton. Uh, Rod Temperton was from England. Yeah. Right. Right. And now he, uh, uh, Rod was. Well, it was. It was at the beginning. Of the the the, the organizer group. It was just a six at first. Okay. Um, now Rod was heavily involved. He he went out on the road, from what I understand, with you guys for a while. But he was heavily involved in the writing of many of the songs. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, he was. He was the principal writer. Okay, principal writer. Okay, were any of the songs on any of the albums? Did you write any of the songs yourself? No, I didn't. But Johnny did, and uh, my wife wrote about three or four songs on some of the albums as well. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. Um, how many albums did Heat Wave do? Uh, up until the time Johnny's accident happened in 1979? Well, all the time, even after Johnny's accident, because Johnny continued recording, uh, we did about five albums, six albums, which was a collaboration, but we did a, a total of five uh, completely new albums, and the sixth one, like I said, was a collaboration. And uh, they were all good, good albums. They all... I, I, I thought they were all were on fire myself. <laughs> well, they, they were, and you're right. They were all good albums, and every time that we got one from the days of uh, the times I was at uh, WDAO, and then when I went to Central State University in 1986, I always made sure that Heat Wave was right at the top of the list on, in, on our surveys, and then your brother Johnny came up to work with us at Central State in our... Right. We had built a 32-track uh, recording studio, and Johnny came up to work he, after his accident to work with us. And the kids at Central State loved him in the studio. We could take his uh, microphone and plug it into the studio, and he could talk into the microphone, as I'm sure you're aware. And all the knobs would move on the board like it was magic. It was just amazing. And, uh, I, you know, every time I, he came in, I always thought about you and, and the group and the good days and the times we had in London, England. And what, what else? Are you doing any writing or anything? Uh, I know you're not performing as much as you used to, but are you doing any writing or any production or anything at this time? Not, not right now at this time. Right now, since, since I, because, you know, in the last two years, I had a stroke myself. So I haven't been doing a lot of writing Basically, after I got well enough to get back up and get out and perform, uh, <clears throat> my main strength now had been just getting strong enough to sing again, to go back out on tour with the band. Right. And I still go overseas quite a bit and tour around here in America. And that was, I guess, I guess that's the 
the meat of what I do now anyway these days. Yeah, I had, I uh, was told and had heard that uh, you had a little bit of a setback health-wise, and I'm just glad that um, you're in the process of, of recovering from that, and uh, I wish you a, a speedy recovery from, from that perspective. But, you know, you got your wife, Linda, of how many years now? Let me see, 38, 39 years? <laughs> Yeah, you close you close around the parameter of what it's supposed <laughs> to be. That's it. <laughs> and I know that for a fact. And you got you got the best nurse in the world with with, with Linda. Oh yeah. And I know she takes care of you, and and and, and that you tell her that that I ask about it and say hello. Um, when you get an opportunity, we want to talk about um, the Funk Museum. Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center, and we want to talk about maybe getting some heat wave memorabilia, maybe some uniforms or some shoes. I know Johnny used to wear a turban or some stuff that you may have in storage so we can represent heat wave. So I'd, I'd appreciate it at some point in time if you would consider that and if you had um, the opportunity, because I know you're still the group leader, and um, if you have the opportunity, maybe you can, you and David Webb can get together and, and collaborate on maybe some stuff we can uh, put in the museum. What is your take, Keith, on the Funk Museum Music Hall of Fame in Dayton, Ohio? I think that that's a good idea because, I mean, we had some great talent that came up out of Dayton, Ohio. And to, to put that together and, and, and make a collaboration of what Dayton represented to the music scene worldwide today, oh, it speaks in volumes. And for the young folk that are coming up today, wanting to know history and how I got around to being there, look to Dayton, Ohio, and you get had to look no further because we got a capsule in there as big as Motown. Well, and, and you're exactly right. And I spent some time with Barry Gordy um, uh, during the development days of the Dayton Sound and I spent some time with him at Motown and had the opportunity to be in the studio with the Temptations and Marvin Gaye and some of the great artists on the Motown. And it just gave me a thought. I said, well, you know, if Motown can do it and be successful, we can do it here in Dayton, Ohio, and be successful as well with the many groups and the talent that we had out of Dayton, Ohio. And one of the major groups that was international was Heat Wave. And you guys toured all over the world, correct? Correct. Uh, the other thing also, you know, Motown was about the doo-wop groups and, you know, different singers like that. But with the sound from Ohio came the bands. And that's when we came out because everything was the battle with bands in, 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 the, in that time in those days. Whereas Motown was like the battle of groups, you know, female and male vocal groups. Whereas the Ohio sound just was, it was at the right time because it brought about a whole new direction where music was heading at that time. Well, you know, you hit the nail on the head because, and we also brought the funk in as well because a lot of the music that are on the many albums that you guys recorded is pure funk. That's right. Had that had that sizzling sound of the day. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And and you know, on on my little radio station in 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 uh, Zenia, Ohio, we still play all the Heat Waves music, and people still respond to it. They request it. They still respond to it like it was just yesterday. And that's a beautiful thing, because of being in part a, a part of that from DAO to WCSU and now to WTRK. Um, is it's, it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing, one, that we're still here to be able to talk about it and for you to uh, perform. And, you know, I, I told you off air, um, I had a little um, setback myself in 2006, and your brother came out to see me on that Friday after I came out of surgery, and uh, he and his wife, Rosalind, because Johnny couldn't drive, obviously, and, and it, for those of you that, that don't know, Keith's brother Johnny Wilder was a quadriplegic in the fourth level from an accident that occurred here in Dayton, Ohio in 1979. And so Rosalind did the majority of the driving and he was just so gracious to come and see me 
And sad to say, he passed that Saturday night, Sunday morning, and is uh, still very uh, sorely missed, I'm sure, by you, Keith, but uh, definitely by me because we were so close. Uh, oh, yeah. So That's Keith, what it looked like back then. Well, you know, we, we, we had some great times together. Um, can we talk a little bit about the value of education? Um, I know you have grandkids. Uh, your grandkids are a little younger than my grandkids. I have six grandkids and one and a half great grandchildren. And I say one and a half because my uh, oldest granddaughter, she and her husband are about due any minute. She might be having the baby as we speak. So I have two great grandkids and six grandkids. Talk about how many grandkids you have. I got three. Okay. I got a grandson. I got a grandson who's. Uh, nine years old and I have two granddaughters one that you heard in the background is four and her older sister is six okay and that's that's my that's my connection to the world today <laughs> I, I i i understand wholeheartedly um have you seen in any of your grandkids or any of your um brothers children um, because you have other brothers th that are still around today. Have any of them started to emulate anything that you've done over the years or your brother Johnny did over the years? Has anybody picked up on that and, and, um, and, and, and formed their own band or their own group or anything of that nature? Well, my son is in the studio recording music now for an album, and uh, two of my daughters are are recording an album. Uh, as far as my grandkids, they're so young, they just sing around the house. <laughs> <laughs> but they all, they sound, they sound little inklings that something might be there. Well, good, good. So, you know, you, you got a son that's recording an album. Um, yeah. is, is, it, is, it, is it the music of today or is it anything like the music of yesterday? More of the music of today. Okay, okay. So he, he sings and he does a little rapping, but it's some pretty good stuff, though. I kind of like what he's doing. I like the direction he's going. Okay. And Are you my daughter, my older two daughters, their, their style is, is laid back, but it's, it's, it's good to where it is. Would you, would you like to hear from my son and ask him a question? <laughs> well, yeah, if you have an opportunity, if he's there. His name is Keith Jr. Come here, Keith. Talk to him for a minute. How you guys doing? Hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm I'm hanging in there for it, old man. Your son, your father was telling me that <laughs> you're doing a uh, an album yourself. So tell me a little bit about your album. Um. Well, it's kind of like you know today's um, R&B and pop. Um. A bunch of you know singing, couple ballads, couple dance hits. Um. I'm actually working to do a couple of remakes of Heatwave's great songs like Always and Forever and Mind Blowing Decisions. Um, but yeah, it's a whole bunch of just, you know, just great, fun music. Um, you know, music like Chris Brown used to do or, and still currently does, um, Justin Timberlake's, you know, upbeat stuff. So just keeping it live. Well, that, you know, when you, when, you know, you hit a chord when you say you, you're doing some of your uncle's music with always and forever i mean because um he he sang he sang that song before the accident he sang that song after the accident and i still play that song uh, every at least once a week on, on my radio station so if we get a remake of it <laughs> you know talk to dad or or make sure that we get a copy of it so we can continue your family's legacy Oh well, yeah, most definitely. Well, good. Well, we wish you a lot of success and and with your. Uh, are you going to self-release it, or is there a label deal or anything involved in it? Um, at the moment, no label deals. It's been a bunch of independent work. Um, but if one does happen to come around, you know, and definitely the right um, setup with it, and my you know parents agree with it, and the management, then I would definitely go with the label. Well, but you're in the right market because Atlanta is a good music. It's a great music market. And you're in the right market, yeah. and, and, and like I said, I wish you all the best. 
So Keith, it looks like what I ask is a continuation of uh, the legacy of, of Heat Wave with your son and, and maybe some uh, of your other other two kids. Yeah, they all there. They like it's a continuation. They all have their hearts in it well enough and they perform. They got good voices and, and they write good. And so, like, I think they go in the right direction. How about education, Keith? Do you push education with your family and your kids and whatnot? Oh, yeah. They all finish school and they all work well. My, well, that's good. My two daughters. They, they do music with the work they're doing, but okay. they, they're all doing well. They're all doing, he's the youngest, and he has another sister, but she, she never got involved with music. She just works. So, I mean, the kids are doing great. I, you know, I try not to push them in the direction I went, you know, because it has to be from their own heart and from where they want to go, and they seem to be going in the right direction. Well, they have good parenting, and good parenting always ends up with good kids. And that's very special because I could just see, like your son said, when I asked about the label deal, he said, with the direction and with the uh, permission of my parents, then we would. So it, it looks to me that if somebody approaches him, he's going to say, make sure you talk to my mom and dad and get you guys involved in that. Is that correct? Yeah, I, 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 you know, some people try to pick up on you and they can abuse a person's career by trying to make it their own. And I just make it so he's checking the right people and the pedigree of where they coming from. That's important. And, and it's good to have a father like you with such a strong music background that knows the business of show business, that's been in the business of show business to give him some direction because you're right, so many youngsters step out there and, and do the same thing so many people have done in the past by having these record contracts and not understanding these record contracts and then getting in themselves in a lot of financial uh, trouble because of um, more show and not enough business. And so it looks like you're getting ready to give your son guidance and your daughters as well. Oh yeah. That's the only way you can do it. You want to prepare them to go in the right direction. So they're just not out there and they put a whole bunch of stuff out there and somebody else is getting them and the next thing you know, their music get abused. Exactly, exactly. Well, Keith, it's been an honor to talk to you and for you to take time out of your schedule to spend some time with us here on the Funk Chronicles. In, in, in uh, 45 seconds to a minute, give us a, give us, Leave us with something very special for the audience uh, from, from Heat Wave. Well, to, you know, from Heat Wave is, it's your heart. You know, if your music is where your heart is and you put your whole heart into it, it will come out the way your heart is as a person and a human being. Johnny and myself, we kept our music in a vein that also was a pure pure, clear picture and representation of what we were like and what we were about. And we kept our music that way. We kept it, you know, something that you can relate for years and years. And it's not something that you would be ashamed to have your children's children, you know, or your family members or your friends ever have a second doubt or, or thought about. And we just kept it real and kept it pure. Uh, well, you know, I know that. Hope you're in that music business. That's the way you keep it. Well, you know, I know that because I've followed you guys for over 40 years in your career, and I have all your albums and play all your albums. And uh, Keith, thank you for joining us on the Funk Chronicles, and God bless and, and continue to get healthy. All right. Thank you, boss. And keep in touch so we can stay in touch and see what things are going. Will do. I have grandchildren in Georgia, so maybe some of them might be coming to you. Uh, <laughs> so thanks again, Keith, and God bless, and tell the, the lovely wife that we ask about her. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Funk Chronicles.
with your host, Dr. Turk Logan from Logan Communication and the Funk Museum Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center. Enjoy your company. We'll see you next time. Wow.